Hello. In this video, we want to display some examples of block functions for a two-dimensional square lattice. So these block functions are the eigenfunctions of the two-dimensional Hamiltonian. And we know from Bloch's theorem that these appropriate eigenfunctions have a particular form. So our psi of r, our eigenfunctions, have the form e to the i k r times u of r. And this u of r is special because it is periodic. Psi of r doesn't have to be periodic, and usually isn't going to be, but u of r is. And we're going to show in line two that its, it's square is periodic in both the x and y dimensions by the exact same amount because it's a square. So the um, lattice length in each direction is going to be a, and that's what the second formula on the slide says, in effect, is that the function is periodic with period a in both the x and y directions. Now, when we display the functions, to make it more convenient, we're going to display just the real parts. So effectively, what we get for our eigenfunctions are going to be things of the form cosine of x times cosine of y times that u of xy, which is our periodic potential. Our periodic potential in this one is basically going to be um, a hydrogen type 1s orbital. Here is our 8 by 8 square lattice for a total of 64 atoms. And the atomic positions are at minus 7, minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, 1, 3, 5, 7 for both the x and y values. The uh, interatomic distance is going to be a in both the x and y directions because we have a square. We can represent the electronic state of a lattice in terms of this quantity k, which is the so-called wave vector. The components of the wave vector are kx in the x direction and ky in the y direction. So rather than computing k for each of these cases, which we could do, um, it'll be more convenient and more direct merely to show you the x and y components of k. And our simplest example is when both of those values, kx and ky, are equal to zero. This is equivalent to an all bonding combination, if you like to think so. So here we have a quick sketch just showing the overall pattern, and we see that all 64 atoms, their 1s orbitals, have exactly the same state because they all have the same color in our representation here. So it means that all the interactions between neighbors are going to be bonded. Here we have kx uh, is equal to 1, ky is equal to 0, and we can see the different phases here in the overall pattern. The uh, green are in the positive phase, and the yellow are in the negative phase. So we have a number of both bonding and antibonding interactions here. Here shown for the same case. In gray are things of negative phase. In white are going to be the positive phase. One thing to notice is if you look along um, a horizontal row, and you'll see that the pattern corresponds exactly to the situation we had when we had a linear array in one dimension that consisted of eight atoms in that previous video. 
So you'll notice that we're going to be able to adapt very quickly the information that we had from a one-dimensional case to apply to the two-dimensional case. Here we have a top-down view for this particular eigenfunction when kx is equal to 0 and ky is equal to 1. And here we have it in simplified form. Everything that is white is of one phase. Everything that is of dark gray is the opposite phase. But notice how it looks like we have just taken the one zero case and rotated it by 90 degrees. That will always be true when we have a square because it will have so-called D4H symmetry. And we'll end up with degeneracy of both the one zero and the zero one state. Now, if k sub x is equal to 1 and k sub y is equal to 1, then we get the uh, eigenfunction that looks like this one. Anything that's kind of in green is of one phase, the positive phase, and the yellow is of the negative phase. Here we have again the exact same eigenstate, but now we're going to have a kind of a faux three-dimensional look at it. We can see um, the positive regions rising high above and the negative regions dropping way below. Here is a simplified representation of the phase relationships if kx is equal to 1 and ky is equal to 2. Now, if we have k sub x is equal to 2 in case of y is equal to 0, then we get an eigenfunction that has this particular form. Everything that is green is positive phase above 0. Everything that is yellow is negative phase. The value of the wave function there, uh, the real part of the wave function there, is going to be negative. And here is a simplified representation of the phase relationship in case of x is equal to 2, in case of y is equal to 0. Note that if you're familiar with the k equal 2 case from the previous video, that looks like just the top line here. So if you just took the top line and just repeated it eight times below, that's what you get. So we noticed a close relationship between the one-dimensional and two-dimensional cases. Now we switch it around a little bit, k sub x is equal to 0, in case of y is equal to 2, and we get this particular eigenfunction in that case. And here are the phase relationships when k sub x is equal to 0 and k sub y is equal to 2. And notice that this looks like the sketch for k sub x is equal to 2, k sub y is equal to 0 if we rotated it by 90 degrees. As a result, they will have, uh, those two states will have the same exact energies, so we say that they are degenerate. Now, if both k sub x and k sub y are equal to 2, we get the following eigenfunction.
And here is the simplified diagram when both k sub x and k sub y are equal to 2. And our final example is when k sub x is equal to 4 and k sub y is equal to 4. So this is an interesting case because we end up with a situation where all of the interactions are antibonded. So this is going to be the highest energy if we're dealing with 1s or 2s type orbitals. And here is another representation of the exact same eigenfunction, but now with more of a tilted three-dimensional one. And here is a simplified sketch of the phase relationships of all those 1s orbitals. And notice that all the interactions, because their neighbors have different phases, are going to be antibonding. So of all the states that we've shown, this particular state is going to be the one that is highest in energy. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy. I have a little bit of a cold, which I apologize. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.